What is going on crypto miners and welcome back to the channel. Well, in today's video, we are going to build out our own home Casper node and pool to solo mine here at my home setup. And you may be asking, well, isn't that overly complicated? Why would I wanna go ahead and do that at home? Great questions, great points. This is super easy. We're gonna get up and running in 10 minutes. Is it super expensive? Absolutely not. I mean, we're doing this with a refurbished PC off of Amazon and a two terabyte NVMe. And you might be asking, all right, cool, I get it, but why would I wanna run my own Caspa node at home? And that's a really, really good question. Just like we talked about in my last video on nodes talking about a Bitcoin node. Hello, Mr. Node. Gnome, how are you doing today? Some sweet stickers there. Anyways, talking about solo mining at home, latency is key. Between the miner and the pool or the node, latency is super important when hitting blocks. And well, if you can go ahead and put a node on the exact same network as your Caspa miner, definitely increases the chances as well as performance and avoids any problems when going ahead and hitting solo blocks. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step how to do this. It is absolutely not complicated. So this is the HP ProDesk 600 G3. This is what I have running now with uh, my solo Bitcoin node that I've set up. And we're gonna do this with the Casper node. Now, I like the extra memory, 16 gigabytes of memory works out well. You don't need anything crazy. i5 is fine. You could get by with like an i3 if you wanted to. Uh, and don't worry about the solid state drive. The smaller, the better because we're swapping it out. So I'm going ahead and decided, you know, right here, this is about $135. See what type of deals you can find out there. I'll link this one directly down below. It's from Amazon's renewed store. So that's kind of a nice benefit. You can always return it back to Amazon real quick and easy. Also easy to work on. Now I did go ahead and pick up a two terabyte NVMe drive versus the 256 because you do need to go ahead and sync the blockchain. Plenty of room with two terabytes, but these units here, these silicon powered units have been great. I've been using these for a while in some of my AI rigs and they've worked out really, really nicely. Jumping over, there is a great guide by the team over at the solomining.co. I'm gonna link this down below on how to run a Bitcoin node. And this is same steps, just a little bit different at the end. I'm gonna show you with Caspa, but we're gonna follow this along. I've been really liking Umbral, simple and easy to use, especially for those of us that aren't super versed in Linux or anything like that. So walking through this guide, what you end up doing is you can scroll through this as you want to. It gives you some of your minimum specs, like it's saying four gigabytes minimum, eight gigabytes recommended. I went with 16, you know, always, I always like to go with more than I need. Now here for storage says 32 gigabytes for Umbral OS, but one terabyte plus for, you know, whatever you're syncing, whatever it's Bitcoin or Caspa. Um, so I just go two terabytes and I'm done with it, right? Now we do need a small little USB flash drive. That's actually what we're going to flash Umbral onto to get started, but it's gonna end up going onto that one terabyte drive. And it definitely recommends ethernet versus wireless, which no surprise with syncing everything. So outside of that coming down here, a lot of you guys are familiar with Blina Etcher as a GPU miner, those that follow uh, my channel with HiveOS and GPU mining. So Blina Etcher is a program that you will download, which you can see here, and it just takes the image, the file, and puts it onto a USB drive, flashes it onto the drive. And you can see there's a direct link right up here to the GitHub for Umbral OS. So it's very simple and easy. You flash it onto there with Blina Etcher, and then you end up installing the USB drive over on the computer, uh, that, that HP computer I'm gonna show you, and then we're going to actually install it from the USB drive over to the two terabyte NVMe. So let me go ahead and get this image process started, and then let's take a walk out to my shed. Sorry to interrupt your video, but check this out. I constantly get emails from the community asking me about trustworthy hosting facilities in the United States that I recommend. Well, I got you covered. Listen up. A few months back, I visited Block Ops Mining's brand new facility in Central Arkansas. The team there was super professional, knowledgeable, and everyday miners like you and I. After visiting the facility, I sent them a few of my ASIC miners for hosting and have been super happy with their service and communication. 
go contact Block Ops Mining directly down below in the video description and tell them the hobbyist miner sent you for great pricing on miners and hosting. All right, let's head out to my home crypto mining shed here. And uh, it's actually starting to get darker so much earlier now, which is really wild. Uh, it's only like 4.30 in the afternoon. So if you guys aren't familiar on my channel, this is just a garden shed, but this is actually my home crypto mining shed. And you can see we got a whole bunch of different deep in projects hanging up top there. Um, this is actually our intake side. We actually used to do a lot of GPU mining in here, had about 80 graphics cards in here. Um, now we definitely don't have anything crazy uh, powerful anymore. All right, heading inside, let's uh, turn on our light here. And we got a variety of different things in here. Uh, server, my NAS unit here. We got some BMM 101 solo Bitcoin miners. We got a bunch of other solo miners in here, Bitaxes, Bitcoin Hex. And here is my home Caspa miner. This is actually a um, KS0 Pro that a community member actually sent me. Got a hold on to it. They painted it, took it apart, put some hobbyist stickers on there, put an RGB fan, super, super thankful. And absolutely been holding on to it. I've been solo mining with it. Just let it run. But it's currently on two miners solo mining. And well, I don't want to give up any of my fees every time I hit a solo block. So we're going to be going ahead and swapping this over to my home, new home Caspa node. We have a bunch of smaller home miners here. Here is my Umbral Bitcoin node. And this is actually a deep miner node as well. We got like a Z9 mini over here, and we got some magic miner, two solo Bitcoin miner magic miners here, and we have some AI rigs along the bottom. But I'm excited to get this on my new Caspa node. Let's head inside and finish the install. All right, back inside here, I took off the lid. Very simple and easy, just slides off. And here's kind of what the inside guts look like. And I did remove the 256 uh, um, gigabyte NVMe from HP. Just one little set screw there, popped it out, put in my new two terabyte NVMe. It's that simple. Then we're gonna go ahead and put the lid back on. And I just found this old Server 2012 R2 thumb drive. And this is actually what I flashed with Belina Etcher and put Umbral OS on it. So let me get this back together and get this booted up. All right, so I wanted to show you a few settings that I've set in the BIOS, which I think will be helpful. So this is on an HP, it could be the same on a Dell or on any of yours. You just have to go ahead and look it up. But on here under advanced uh, and under boot options, I went ahead and left fast boot on. I removed CD-ROM boot, useless at this point. Made sure 100% that USB storage boot is on. Removed Pixie boot. And then under after power loss, I made sure power on is enabled. So if your power goes out and everything comes back on, your node comes back on as well. And it's available for your miners to go ahead and start mining to versus having to go out and physically turn it back on. So always recommend you do AC power on, which is nice. The other thing is under advanced, under secure boot, I've gone ahead and turned off secure boot. So right now configure legacy support and secure boot, legacy support enabled and secure boot disabled. This allowed me that when I go ahead and power cycle it, it boots right to the USB drive to start the Umbral OS install. All right, so check it out. It went ahead and booted right to this. I didn't have to do anything. Has installing Umbral will wipe your entire storage device. Number one is your USB disk. You don't want that. You can see it's only 14 gigabytes, but number two is my NVMe is that two terabytes. So it said select a storage device by number to install Umbral OS. So I just hit number two and then just hit enter and bam, it's underway and installing Umbral OS. All right, so that took about five minutes. Take a look, Umbral OS has installed. Press any key to shut down. Remember to remove the USB drive before turning back on. So let's go ahead, press enter and let's do that. All right, we're over on the computer. And when you go to that website, it actually brings you right to your actual nodes kind of operating system for Umbral OS. And I've really becoming very happy and love using Umbral OS. It's been great so far. So, all right, so now it's gonna ask you to go ahead and create an account. This is just on your node. It's not on any website or anything. So go ahead, write down your account information, make sure that you have it, you know, in a good safe place that you can't lose it and then hit create. All right, after you've created your account, it says you're all set, hit next. All right, so this is where the next screen comes to, and this is kind of like your homepage. It has that very much like Apple feel to it, doesn't it? Uh, but I love it, it looks really, really good. So now we need to install two things, but it's gonna be actually packaged together in one. It's going to be our Caspa node 
which is going to sync the blockchain. And it's also going to be the stratum because we need a pool. Now, there isn't some super nice looking GUI for this. So it's a few steps and it's a little bit of back end, but honestly, it's super simple and easy. So let's do this together and I'll show you as we go. So the first thing you're going to do is come down and you're going to select the second icon here, this blue one. And this is where in my other videos I've showed you, you can download the Bitcoin node and you can also download the public pool. So node and the pool and bam, it's very simple and very easy, but they don't have this yet for Caspa. But thankfully, community member Retro Mike, many of you guys know of him, him and I have been chatting and he's actually put together a package for Umbral to do everything we want to do for Caspa. It's a node and a pool all together. So we're going to come up to the little dots here, click little dots and do community app store. Now there's a URL to GitHub that is his GitHub. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it in here. And I'm also going to put this directly down below. We're going to hit add. Once you hit add, we're going to hit open. Now it's going to show right here. Check this out. Caspa solo mining node. So we're just going to go ahead and select it. And look, it says node plus solo mining stratum bridge. Connect your miner and it even tells you the port 5001. So let's go ahead and select it. And yeah, it's a lot of logs and text, but don't let it overwhelm you. It's actually super simple. Let's click install. So once that install process is done, this is kind of what your homepage on your Umbral OS node looks like. You can see it has actually your storage space, how much is available, your CPU or your memory and storage allocated, which is great. So you can go ahead and click on Caspa solo node and it brings up this page and don't let it overwhelm you. You know, it's not the fanciest GUI out there, but does it do the trick? Yes. So on the left hand side here, I just want to show you two things real quick here because we have to let this guy sync. The first thing is Caspa pad is how that ends. And this right here is actually the node itself. And this is the one that it's going to take a while to go ahead and sync and you have to let it sync. The second one here is actually the pool. And that's this guy. And you can see under server one, it's actually getting errors because it hasn't been fully synced. Node is not synced, waiting for sync. So we're going to go ahead and let this sync. It's going to take a while, probably a day or two, who knows, and I'll be back when this is done. All right, so it has been 24 hours. I did move our Caspa node out here. Look at this, I got like everything tiered here, it looks awesome. And here is our Umbral Caspa node and pool. Even put a little label on there with the IP address. But it's been 24 hours, it is fully synced up. And now I have our Caspa KS0 here, our custom painted one is right now solo mining to my own Casper pool. Let me show you. All right, so it has been 24 hours and we are quasi mining. Let me explain. Let's go ahead and open this up. And this is over on the Dazzle page that I showed you guys yesterday. If we click, click on Caspad, this is actually our node. You can see it's syncing, it's accepting blocks. Now, yesterday I showed you guys that when you click on the pool or the server on the left, we were getting a node is not synced. It was like a red error message. Now you can see we actually have something on there. So that kind of lets you know that everything is up and syncing. Now there's two kind of red flags here that I want to show you guys why I say things are quasi mining. So right here is my KS0 blue. Um, this is that KS0 that I showed you out in the shed. This thing is something is borked or messed up about this thing. Granted, it, it's quite a few years old now. And so it is not hashing at the way it should be. You can see here it's coming in at 4.67 mega hash. It should be like at like 100 giga hash, not 4.67 mega hash. And I struggled to get this up and working. Um, it, it did have PB Farmer on it and I can't get logged into it. It keeps failing and timing out. So we probably are going to retire uh, that to the shelf uh, this little KS0 Blue, I spent several hours trying to get it up and working. So it is working. It's just uh, the miner is not working as we would expect. But I want to explain my future plans here in just a second. Now, uh, connected with Retro Mike, he's the one who put this all together and designed it. This red error you see here, uh, this is actually because of the Ice River firmware. He let me know that uh, sometimes you can get this error. Nothing to be concerned about. You're actually getting it every few minutes. Uh, that's in here, something along the lines of, and he can explain significantly better than I can, along the lines of the Ice River firmware looking for something that is not there, but it is not required. So all of this being said, if you're running this and you're like, okay, obvious, this is awesome, but how do I know when I hit a solo block, right? 
Um, well, actually, if you come over to Casper Explorer and you put in your Bitcoin address up top here, this is my Bitcoin address, uh, it will go ahead and actually shows you your transactions here. And you can see I earn about 3000 Caspa every three days or so uh, with my current Caspa miners. I have about 11 miners total. I'll show you guys in a minute here. But you would see in here when you hit that block uh, is how that would be recorded. So uh, that's how you would know. Now, as I said, this is not the prettiest thing out there, but it is absolutely functional. So what my plan is to do is I'm mining right now to two miners and I'm pool mining Caspa currently right now. And that being said, we right now have about 155 terahash on two miners with 11 ASIC miners. Some of these are KS5Ls, some of these are KS5 Pros. My thought is, and my goal is, is Caspa's network hash rate has really dropped. So as you can see, over the last year, it has gone down significantly, about 50%. So I'm thinking, and I want to test this out, but with 155 terahash, I think it's time to jump off of pool mining and jump over to solo mining and see how well we will do. So that's something that I'm currently looking at that I'm deciding. So these miners are actually all over at my ASIC mining shed. So that means I'm going to be moving my pool, my, my node over there because I want it to be localized, which is fine and definitely my goal. Uh, and that is something that I'm looking to do. So I'll keep you guys updated on how everything goes. I'm really eager to see if it's more profitable than making about 3000 Caspa every three days. We'll have to see how many blocks we can hit. But hopefully guys, this was super helpful to you guys. Um, go ahead and leave your comments directly down below. Also check out the links directly down below to everything that we talked about with the hardware. Um, with the GitHub. And once again, I want to give a huge shout out to Retro Mike for helping me put this together so that I could get this video out for you guys. Take care.